All right, Shalom, Shalom Lekum, Shalom Lenante Yehun. May the Shalom, may the peace of Yeshua HaMoshiach be with you all, or at least may it be with those of you who can receive it. Brothers and sisters, I, I've got to make a move, um, but before I make this move, i got a couple of minutes to kind of reason with the eye and also strengthen certain, certain main um, foundationals of the scripture. So, in the discipleship, the Torah portions, as you know, are very important. They provide a foundation, as well as the daily Psalms. So we're going to come out with some um, mini books and pocket books uh, addressing some of those, giving kind of a summary, but the, the details in the teaching, you'll send of his majesty, that we get the, the details that we need to overcome the, the satans, the negativities, the evil, and the evil and the evil doers. But first, we have to focus on Yeshua. We have to focus on He, who is I and I victory. All right. So this is um, some copies of um, uh, two of the beginning um, discipleship. Um, you, you see this right here. Let's get a little bit of light right now. Mm -hmm. This one is the first one. Um, you um, reap what you sow. In other words, what is it that you sow? To know what you're reaping, you have to recognize what you're sowing. Now, some might not think that they're sowing, but we all are sowing, whether we're conscious of it or if we're unconscious of it. We all are sowing. So this one right here, as you can see, this is some of the older um, handouts. The handouts right here, the, some will call it the tracks that we used to um, publish you know, by hand as we walked up and down throughout the land, usually um, having a co-laborer, sometimes, you know, by ourselves. But Christ sends us out, you know, in peers when we're ready to go out to him. You understand? But we still can pass these off, you know, make copies of these, so forth and so on. So this one right here is uh, you reap what you sow or you reap what you sow, Right? Most say what you sow, you reap, and both of those are true, but this is the question, all right? This is the question right here, all right? This is the question. You reap. In other words, we're already reaping. What you sow, what is it that you sow, all right? So here we see Yeshua, you know, riding upon the, um, the, the, the donkey, you know, that, that into Jerusalem, the, 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 the coal, or the coal, the, the, the coal, what is it, what's it called again? Um... The foil, foil, you know, it uses the old English and stuff like that. That's why we have the dictionaries to look these things up so we can know what they are. But basically it was upon that donkey, right? Or some say a she-ass, as it were, right? So this one is from, this one was published January 1996. So this is what I and I, you know, was doing January 1996, right? Um, we call it Yehuda where Yehuda where using Judah, Judah month, the month of Judah, January um, 65 A.B. The A.B. is Ameta Bejwa, or the year of the Redeemer, counting that significant um, coronation of his imperial majesty, being very significant with the Beta Israel, the once lost but now found redemption, according to the prophecy of, of looking to Africa where a black man shall be crowned king, in him you will find the Redeemer. Now, this we have according to the first one, the first proclaimers, and that was Reverend James Morris Webb. Web, Reverend James Morris Webb. Most will say it's Marcus Garvey, but if you look at Marcus Garvey's um, version of it, it's a little bit different. You know, look to Africa, black man crowned king, but the day of redemption is near, is near. Others, other versions say it's here. But the original prophecy, the original um, prophetic that was spoken by this man right here, right, um, Reverend James Morris Webb, right, Reverend James Morris Webb, all right, says uh, Jesus was Negro by blood, one of his old articles and, and books right here. This is the one who Marcus Garvey heard that prophetic word from this reverend, this Afro-American, African-American, Judahite reverend. So he saw it in prophecy, and he wrote about it, and we have that testimony, all right? So 
This is also a very important man you need to know within the movement of Rastafari, especially as it applies to I and I as Afro-American or so-called African-American or African-American Negroes, truly Judah. All right, so Malaku, the angel of his imperial majesty, this is a mini book that, you know, we have published um, recently to help write and correct the record. You know what I'm saying? Challenge those who say otherwise to um, present their evidence. Otherwise, let them acknowledge that it is truth. You know this? Because we don't have time for, for so-called games in that sense, the Babylonian games, right? But anyway, this is the second one right here. This is for the disciples, so disciples pay attention to this. Hopefully we'll go into some more on that as well. This is the second one right here. So it begins with 30 and 31. This is 31 right here, and this is the second parable of Yeshua. The tears, right, the tears, the tears, two different type of tears. So, you know, word, sound, and power, and understanding, and contextuality is very, very important. And this is the imagery right here. Now, we had did something years ago saying that the famine, the famine was coming to America. You know what I'm saying? And, and we're, we're moving into that prophecy. It's like we have, we've had grace since this time. So if we count from, what is it, 1996 to, what, 2012, um, we have, what, about, about what, eight, 16, 16 or so years as it, as it, as it would be. 16 or so years, and this is the 120th of Lij Teferi, of the manifestation of Kedamawi Haile Shalasi, of Haile Shalasi the first. So in the discipleship, this is the second one. Uh, inspiration came to I and I, a clarity actually. The Holy Spirit was able to, to clarify, at least I was able to receive this clarity, because the Spirit is always speaking to us, but sometimes it can only speak to us according to our maturity and according to I and I faith. Now, I was thinking about the parable where it said, um, you remember the, the, the husband men or, or, or the workers, the laborers, which is symbolic of us as the as a morit, as the children, right? Christ gave a parable, and let's go right here, Matthew. Now, at the level of Matthew, right, when we get to the level of Matthew chapter 13, we call this often um, high school in a sense, while chapters 1 to say 12, the end of 12 would be the elementary, the elementals, elementary school, the basic school, the basics that we need to know. Now we're going to, Ja willing, hopefully go into more details and clarify. Some might already be able to perceive what we're saying by this and how it works in the order. Now, we, we'll deal with the first principles, the word of Ja, in our Ja people destined to reign, that Ja wants I and I to reign. Jah wants I and I to rule, but in order to do so, we have to be in the um, conformity to his will. You're saying conformity to his purpose, so that all things work towards the good of the good of those who love the Lord, love Adonai, and are called according to his purpose. That's the key right there. His purpose. You know so though we may think that we're in his purpose, if we're ignorant of his word. You know what I'm saying? And his testimony, both the word of the scripture, but for Rastafari, it begins with the gospel of the good news, the good news of his imperial majesty. Mm -hmm. And this is another mini book right here, the gospel of him, you know what I'm saying? which is like a basic, you call a basic primer concerning the good news of his imperial majesty, proving this, um, this revelation of the mystery of God in Christ. For I and I, the Rastafari. All right? So this one right here is also another very important mini book, and we hope that all the Dek Amezamorit have a copy. And as we mentioned before, if you have not either purchased or ordered a copy, you don't have a copy, get in touch with I and I because we want to send out a, a discipleship um, circular and letter we've been working on. You know, saying to respond and reply to those disciples who we might not be in direct communication and might be wondering, well, I sent in the application, what has happened, so forth and so on. Hopefully, one has 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 continued to hear the word and also gone it to study it so that you can know it for yourself. You know, saying that you can verify, hear the message, but be like the Bereans, right? The Bereans heard the apostle Hawari Paulos Paul preach every Sabbath. 
You understand? And 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 they went and they checked the scriptures for themselves to see whether the things that he said were true. And and the Bible calls them noble, noble. So that's what noble really means. And when we when we start to address these words and as we res recognize what the kingdom of the Lord is and what our true work and purpose is, Jah wants I and I to reign. So let's look at this proverb. This proverb of the Moshiach. Let's look at this proverb of the Moshiach. All right, and we're going to continue, Jah willing, with this, the first principles. Now, this is from Hebrews chapter, chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. Well, actually, chapter 5, um, going from, I think, verse like uh, 10, 11 in chapter 5 to um, Hebrews chapter 6 roughly verse 12, but this is like verse 1 and verse 2. What will be the first principles of the oracles of God or the word of Jah? What are the first principles? He says, when the time was that we should be teachers, we have need that one teach us again, which be the first principles. What are the first principles of Rastafari? What are the first principles of God? What are, what are the first principles of that word of Jah? Now, of course, his majesty testifies, because Christ said that no one testifies him but the Father, and Abba Kedus testifies. You know, and so his word is the foundation for I and I as true and faithful Ras Teferi. All right, so let's go into um, a little bit of high school. Let's deal with Ras Teferi high school right here, or the discipleship level of high school right here. So we're in chapter 13. And we're going to touch on the second mystery, the second mystery, right? The second mystery, as we mentioned already, you can go to our study page, right? You can go to the study page, and you'll see these um, imeros. These imeros are on the study page. So we're dealing with the tears, the tears, right? The tears, two, two kind of tears, you know what I'm saying? But they're linked. These two type of tears are linked. And even I and I tears... You understand, I and I tears are linked with those tears if you, when you come to the overstanding level. Now, this is the first parable, right? The first parable is you reap what you sow because Christ is teaching, he is manifesting and teaching the true law, the true Torah, all right? So we're studying the Old Testament Torah, but we have to take those veils off of our eyes so we can see that these are all they which testify of him. We search the scriptures and we might think or, or make ourselves believe that, okay, we have eternal life. We think we have eternal life, but these are they which testify of Christ, even Christ in his kingly character. For thus has Kedamawi Haile Shalasi said, For my part, I glory in the Bible. So we who are his namesake must also find that glory, must ask, must, must, must seek must knock at that door, you know what I'm saying, so that, so that overstanding can open up, you know what I'm saying, in your head, and then it can, you know, as it, as it were, disseminate to your heart. So some things we're learning, of course, we're learning in the head, you know what I'm saying, but it has to be rooted and grounded in righteousness or in the heart chakra, all right? So here we are at um, um, Matthew chapter 13 at verse 24 which is the second mystery, the tears among the wheat. The tears, T-A-R-E-S, among the wheat, right, among the wheat. Now, I don't know how each of you might be familiar with agricultural, agriculture, agriculture. And this is also a mainstay of the true Rastafari, you know, in which many of the 40-year generation Yosin of our Rastafari elders, many forgot. Many became forgetful of this. So we, we get land. We get a land grant. You know what I'm saying? But we don't know how to go into that agriculture. You know what I'm saying? Because of these lack of these first principles, the word of Jah, the word of Jah, as well as there's other reasons, but the scripture will disclose all of those to us. What we're going to touch on is this right here, the second mystery. So the tears, in, in the Kurdad, I think, Bamarinya, the Inkardad, um, the tears are like the fake wheat. It's like the fake wheat, right? And I guess we would say like, oh, that's a fake roster, right? Well, it says 
in the King James, judge not. But, but that's a, this is a mistranslation there. It really should say condemn not. We must judge. We must weigh and balance. But we must not so be, be so eager to come into judgment. You know what I'm saying? Come into condemnation in that sense of judgment. You know what I'm saying? Because in judgment there can be condemnation or there can be acquittal. You understand? Know this is why Christ taught the disciples on the elementary level. You know what I'm saying? To condemn not. King James translated as judge not. But that's a lesson for lost in mistranslation. When we're going to deal with certain verses, certain areas of scripture, as we compare it with the Metzaf Kedus of his imperial majesty, we're able now to see the overstanding. You know what I'm saying? That there's something in the understanding, if one doesn't overstand it, is able to give somebody a misstanding or an improper standing, all right, in the way, you know, in, in the way, the truth, and the life, all right? So here the tears are like the fake wheat, in a sense. It looks like wheat. It's like the wasp and the, um, the bees, the wasp and the bees. Uh, to an uh, untrained eye, they both look similar. They look almost the same. But as you start to look at what is different, like looking at the real and looking at the counterfeit, you cannot tell the counterfeit dollar bill unless you know what a real dollar bill is. So just to use that as an example, as a, as, as a simile, or, or, or even a proverb in a sense. But here, here it says, another parable, another misale, another mishle, put he, speaking of Yeshua, getachin, adonenu, Yeshua, did Yeshua put forth to them saying, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven, is likened to a man which sowed good seed, which sowed good seed in his field. He sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way and went his way and went along wherever he was going. But perhaps to sow more, more tears in other people's fields too. But when the blade was sprung up and broke forth fruit, then appeared the tears also. Then appeared the tears also. So as things started to ripen, as things started to harvest, you know what I'm saying, as things started to progress, that's when you see these things, you know, busting out. You know what I'm saying, these things happening, right? Um, verse 27, it says, um, so, before we go to verse 27, let's look at verse 26 again. It says, but when the blade, the blade, right, was sprung up and brought forth fruit. So that blade sprung up and then, and then it fructified, right? It brought forth fruit, right? Notice what it says after the comma. It says, then appeared, then appeared the tears also. It's not the same sort of process. You see, the, the wheat goes through that process because the wheat is good. It goes through that process, but the tears kind of just pop up. It just appears, right? See, and that, that teaches us not to look for so-called quick results without, like, you know, um, without due diligence, due work. You know, like some of us might be studying, 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 but we have to remember that study goes along with the manifestation. So we're not just studying to study for study's sake. We're studying to know the truth, you know what I'm saying, and, and to have an application, have, have a, a, an understanding of what to apply or how to apply it both within ourself, on the I level, as well as among I and I. So if each of us take that responsibility within I and I self, then that I-nity, you understand, that I-nity, that unity is possible because the key is the knowledge of the Son of God, the Bain Ha Elohim, Yet or the world, the world. Now, 27, verse 27, let's go forward. It says, so the servants of the householder, of the household of the Balabate, the servants of the householder came and said to him, Sir, actually if I said like Adoni or Gita, you know saying, but Sir, this that this not thou so good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tears? Now the servants came along, right? And they basically said to the to the master, now no, these are the servants whose job it was to be in the field. Just like I and I job relation vis-a-vis -vis to his match is to be in the field. Now, the field is explained as the world, to be out in the world. You know what I'm saying? According to our gifts, according to our calls. 
having that faith and that trust and that confidence in Jah, in Yeshua, in his word, and with our brothers and sisters who, who also seek to do his will as well. That, see, once we, once we ground ourselves, then, then our eyes are open to discern. You understand? But we have to get off of that condemnation, that condemnation in a sense. It's as if we're ignorant of his word. You understand? Because that means that we are, that's, that, that's another example of self-righteousness. You understand? That self-righteousness and, and faulty legalism. As, as we've been experiencing, even within the Ethiopian World Federation, with brother, so-called Sue's brother, and that before the Gentiles. So we're going to the Gentiles, asking the Gentiles to work out our kingdom, because obviously ones don't know of the divine heritage. And that's the, kind of the long and short of it, but we go into some more of those details regarding the Federation, the Ethiopian World Federation, this document right here, giving the history, giving a timeline, as well as addressing some of the the major um, confusion, civil and religious, that we are in in this Rastafari age of judges, you know, where it says that, um, and in that time, there was no king in Israel, so every man did whatever he pleased according to his own sight, you know. Every man did that which it was right, you know what I'm saying, or good, in that other words, in his own sight. We're in that this is the present state. This is the present status right now of what we're going through right now in Rastafari. But the more details as we get into the judges, as we get into judges, and job willing, we'll be able to get into that particular teaching. But check it out, pray on it, study up on it, and may may, may Jah give you the the ability to see, you know, and recognize the truth for yourself. So the the servants came along. And they said to the master, the householder, right, um, didn't you sow good seed in that field? From whence then hath it tears? Now, as I've, as I've mentioned in, in these uh, two iMeros and you find on the study page in PDF form, you can download it for the ISL. You will get an overstanding of this. You know, as you study this, you'll see well, what, what we wrote at that time. Um, and the gnosis, the overstand, the imero of it concerning, you know, the parables. And in principle, it's still, you know, it's still um, right and exact. However, there's a, there's a revelation. You know, even if we're familiar with this word, Yeshua still reveals to us what we're able to receive. So we still, we shouldn't get like, oh, yeah, 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 I know that, so forth and so on. You understand? Because when we get in that sort of mind, we, we, we don't attract anymore we repulse in that sense even even the good and especially the good but what i noticed was interesting about this as i was reasoning this on this with Echite, um me stay I I, I I i i was reasoning i said wait there's something interesting about that because the householder in other words the householder is likened to say his majesty right and the the servants are those ministers. It's almost like the famine. We could almost look at this as the so called Ethiopian famine, which they you know, which which they in the blame Hala Selassie first game, you know, keep blaming his majesty for what is, is otherwise either act of God or act of negligence of those whose responsibility it was in the government, in the kingdom, or in the empire of the King of Kings. But of course, you know, his Majesty being most responsible, you know, as a responsible man, as a good man, as the, as the household of this parable. Notice this right here. The servants come to him and saying, didn't you sow good seed? It's almost like, didn't you send these Ethiopians abroad to get education and knowledge and so forth and so on? Didn't you, didn't you put out the good word to the Afro-Americans and those in the Caribbean, the blacks and diaspora, who was looking for that prophetic day of God and Christ? Didn't you, didn't you sow good seed in thy field? From whence hath it tears? From whence do the likes of, say, um, the, the offended Marcus Garvey pop up, spring up from? And, 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 and others in various different ways, even in the so-called uh, revolution, more the um, creeping coup and the, the, the great transgression against the king of kings. But notice what the Balabait, the householder, said. He said to them, an enemy, an enemy hath done this. This is why we have proclaimed to you the Illuminati did that. 
Yo, it was in 74 and 75. They did that. His Matthew was trying to tell us and tell the world from 19 even 41, where he talk about the godless and the cruel dragon, which is newly oppressing humanity and mankind. But I don't know what they thought about that. I don't know how they received that then. Maybe they couldn't really understand that that word was too high above their, above their rasoch, above their heads. But the Balabait said to them, an enemy has done this. Now, what I noticed was interesting, it says, while men slept. It didn't say while the Balabate slept. So the Balabate is the one that purchases the seed. You know, like if you're a household, if you have a farm or something, you purchase the seed, you make sure everything that you need for the field and for the servants are, 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 are provided for. And you give it to each according to their capacity and according to their um, responsibility, you understand, to go about and do their work. You understand? So it was not the Balabait, the householder. In other words, it was not the God of Israel. It was not the king of kings who slept, but it was men who slept. And you know who these men were? These very same servants. These very same servants are coming, you know, what we call it playing, not playing stupid, but, you know, playing nice in a sense. They said, sir, this not thou sow good seed in thy field? Did it say that the Balabait went out and he sowed good seed? In his field, say he's likened to a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, in other words, he was out there, like a farmer who owned the farm, he's out there, but it's the servants who are, who are serving. You understand? And they're not supposed to serve just in putting out the seed, but also to monitor the field, to check out the field, and to monitor the field. And, but, but while they were having their siesta, as it were, you know, in the enemy, Satan, it's a regular Yehun, curse be he, he came along, and the, the householder says, an enemy hath done this. Now the servant said to him, wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? You know what I'm saying? In other words, do you want us to go and, 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 and to drape them up, to gather them up? Verse 29, it says, but he said, but the Balabate said, you know what I'm saying? But Christ in his kingly character say, nay. It's like when the revolution happened or was happening. Um, and many people try to say that Karamawi Khaila Shalasi Abu Kadus was, was senile because he's the ancient of days. He was senile. You understand? Uh, no, 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 no. He's seen the now. He's seen the now in better days and in these days too. But he's not senile in that sense. You understand? And the same reaction, they was wondering, well, how come his majesty did not fight you know what I'm saying, against those who were protesting, against those who were, who were being um, 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 heavily burdened by Illuminati propaganda against him, the so-called students, those who bit their hand of he who fed them. He said, nay. He said, no. He, I mean, even the princess, Tanyanyang Wark, she was even, according to some testimonies, she was in a, a panic and a huff because she was like, jail these people. You understand? Arrest them. Stop this and everything. But his majesty said that there will be no bloodshed. He said there will be no bloodshed. You know what I'm saying? He said, nay, lest while ye gather up the tears. Now notice what the household of what Yeshua, the son, says. What the Bain Ha Elohim says here. The Walda Egeziyavi here, Lotu Subhat says, Simu Yit Barak. He says, lest. Unless while ye, while y'all gather up the tears, while y'all try to get out the so-called, uh, the so-called fake rosters, the, 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 let's use it like that, or the ones who are just on, on, on a lower level, reggae level, or just smoking weed level, or whatever like that, while you're trying to gather up the tears, ye root up, you're going to root up, it says, also the wheat with them. You're going to root up the wheat with them because you have the tears. See, you have to understand, back then they understood this. You know, when, when he said it, those who were wise and, and could understand the symbology, the verbal hieroglyphic of it and interpret it, they recognize that, and, and it's not explained there, but you have to go and look at agriculture. You'll see how the, how the tears would wrap around, you understand, underground and would wrap around, you understand, the so-called um, the wheat, right, the sinde. It would wrap around it. So if you try to pull up, a, a, a tear over here under the ground that's wrapped around the roots that you're going to mess up the wheat and it's not seasoning yet. It's not seasoning yet. So, so while that wheat is still uh, ripening, see the wheat is still able to ripen even if the tears are there. You have to understand this. It can still come to, 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 to harvest. But if you be premature, 
You know what I'm saying? If you be premature and you pull up that, that tear, that inkarzad, you're also going to uproot the wheat because underneath the ground, they are kind of connected. It will connect. The, the, the tear will connect itself. So let's understand what this means for us in this time of Rastafari revelation, what this parable, what this verbal hieroglyph, what it translates to, in other words, in real time. Verse 30, the last verse of this particular second um, or mystery. It says, let both grow together. John says, let both grow together. Some of says, well, um, can this kind of Rastafari be a Rastafari? Can a, a white boy be Rastafari? Can an Asian woman be Rastafari? Can, can a European be Rastafari? Can a Hispanic be Rastafari? Can a, you know, can, is, is a Jamaican more Rastafari than an African American? It is like, wow, like, man, you need, you need the good news. You need to listen to his majesty. You need to, as they shut the bleep up, you know what I'm saying? Let his majesty's words speak to your, your head and your heart. You know what I'm saying? He says, let both grow together until what? The harvest. You know what I'm saying? The harvest, because the wheat in the ground is doing its wheat thing. You know what I'm saying? The wheat, wheat is doing its wheat thing. It's, it's getting that nutriment, and it, 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 it's, it's growing. It's growing. It's coming to that fulfillment. You know what I'm saying? In other words, it's, it's becoming mature. This connects also with this teaching here on, of course, John's people destined to reign. But this, this is the basic, because here he's teaching us the mysteries of the kingdom. The mysteries of the government, the true kingdom. You know, federation, uh, Ethiopian World Federation, federation is a form of government. Feder a federation is a form of government. And when you study that word, fi uh, feder, it comes down to fides or fodes in the Latin. And then you come back to the Greek, it goes to pistis, right? And just earlier I was in chapter 11 of the book of Hebrews, and I clicked on the one that talked about Sarah. And it says how Sarah was past the age and the time and everything, but, but, but how she trusted, how she had faith in the one who was faithful. So I clicked on that word faithful. I was on, you know, the cell, the smartphone, the cell phone. And so I clicked on it. I was in the blue letter Bible. You understand? Um, I clicked on it. I went into the root of the word. You understand that, that, that word faithful? And it went back to peace, peace, peace toy, or something like that. And it said, one who is, let's see if I recall this, I think it's it a Greek 5403. You understand? Um, check, out, check out the verse for yourself, peace, peace, in the Latin, chapter 11 of the book of Hebrews, where it says, Sarah trusted in the one who was faithful. And I looked at the word faithful, according to the Greek um, Septuagint, right? And it says something very interesting. It says, faithful is one who is, okay, it was verse 11. It was 11, 11, 11, 11. Wow, that number's been coming up, 11, 11. 11, 11, it says, through faith, beimnet, through faith also, Sarah, Shara, Sarah herself received, she kabbalah, mekebel, strength. She received strength, supernatural. You know what I'm saying? Strength to conceive seed. In other words, for that seed now, for her womb to now grow that seed, in other words, to conceive seed, and was delivered of a child when she was past age. When she was, you know, they say, oh, woman, your childbearing age is from here to here. And ones have faith in that, and they limit themselves because, as it says um, concerning Kedetun Glamariam, it says, virgin in mind, virgin in body. So if you think negative in your mind state, you also, in a sense, poison your body, how everything springs from the mind or from the head. So we have to be connected to the head, and the head is aras. The head is aras, the ris. And that, that ris, that ras, is Christos, is the mushia. That, that, that ras, in other words, is God. But in, in our order, that ras is Christ, because the head of Christ is God the Father, is Abba Kedus, is Kedus Abba Tachin. Now, Right here, verse 11, 11, it says, because, so she was able to be delivered of a child when she was past the age, you know, past the time of age. And according to the scripture, she was up nearly in her hundreds, 90s and hundreds, all right? Um, it says right here, because, and now here's, here's the key part, because, because you, you, you hear that, you'd be like, well, how could that happen? Why did that happen? How could that happen? Well, here's the how. Here's what answers the how. Because. For what cause? Because 
because she was being in this cause effect that she judged him faithful. She judged him faithful. All right? She judged she had a way and bound. Is it true? Is it not true? You understand that ma'at? You understand she had a way and bound. She judged him faithful. Yatamana. Yatamana. Rastaman. You understand? Yatamana. She judged him faithful who had promised. The one who had promised, the one who had spoken and gave her that, that as they say, tesfa, gave her that hope. She, she, she judged it. She received it. So, so this is teaching us also, especially it's teaching us how to walk in this. Not just to be on a religious level. You read it and then, okay, now let's sing a song, so on and so on. But you really don't receive it. So, so you're reading this in the church, or when you read this, you, 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 you accept it on a certain level, but you don't really fully receive it to walk out in it and have it manifest. So that study must also have that manifestation. So this parable right here, so when I went to the word faithful, right, I went to the word faithful in the Greek, I think 54, the G5403, right, it said um, one who is trusty, one who one who is a trusty, I think, and it says faithful, and she was like 53 times in translation in the New Testament for um, for faithful, right? And some other forms to believe, be sure, so forth and so on. But the majority of times have been translated as faithful. Then it says one who is faithful is one who is faithful in transaction of business, right? One who is um, faithful, what was it, faithful in transaction of business. It was um, faithful in um, uh, uh, business. Well, I remember business was one of them. You understand? One was faithful in transaction of business. I wish I could bring, somebody bring that up. If we can bring that one up. I think I saved it on, 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 on the phone. But, but, but it gave, it gave this, is not, this is not my main lecture right here. The lecture is still on the tears. But how it kind of broke down a practical, a practical example of um, let's go down here. A practical example of uh, faith. A practical example of faith when you get into the root. If this, if this comes up here, let me see if I recall it. I just had it just a moment ago. One who's faithful. And see, I even told myself at the time, and now I'm, I'm going to kind of tell on myself. You understand? But I have to because then ones can, you know, iron sharpen iron. As I always say to ones and ones, you know, make sure you note it, you make a note of it. I have my pen. I have my paper. I could have made a note of it, and unfortunately, I did not. So I'm caught out here um, for a moment, family. So, um, you know, learn from, you know, learn from uh, um, my example. They say any fool can learn from his own mistakes, so we can all make mistakes and learn from it. But a, a wise man or a wise woman learns from the mistakes of others. So I should have wrote it down. It could have been easy for me just to pop the book and just go to it. was one who was faithful in business, um, like a business transaction, um, one who was faithful in, like, like, like whatever they delegated. But it gave, like, three examples. I said, said, wow, this would be a good lesson to share with the brothers and sisters. It's, it's like it gives a practical application, right, a practical application. So um, while this machine is a little slow right here, while it's opening up, hopefully we'll go through that in more detail, probably give it a whole, a, a whole teaching on that right there. But I gave, you, I gave you the point, and so you can find out, hopefully, you know, for yourself probably before, if you hear this lecture, before um, we even find out about, well, not really, because by the time we post it up, we're going to find this verse because, you know, it's a little bit... Um, I only remember one who's faithful in any business transaction. I don't know if it was like legal, kind of legal paperwork, but it kind of connected with many of the things that we are speaking about. You know, and, and it shows even ones and ones who might think like, well, this is religious. How can you apply it to so many other things in life? Well, that's the whole point. You know, and this is the instruction manual. You know, and well, we have to study this manual so we can be approved to God. You understand? Be approved in, in the real life and the liberty. You understand? Because basically it all, you understand, it all is of Jah. You understand? And to Jah in glory. That which is not is basically that rebellion, you understand, in, in ourselves. That which he gives us free will to do and that which we do that's not according to his will. You understand? It's not as though he himself, in a sense, created evil in the sense that people have said like the Inkardad, for, for example, the Inkardad, both of them are growing. You know what I'm saying? Both of them, he gives, in a sense, life to grow together until the harvest. 
It says, in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, I will say to the reapers, okay, here, here we go. I will say to the reapers, let me put this right here, Sarah, and let me put faithful, right? Sarah, faithful, in the Blue Letter Bible search, and it's going to bring it up. So it says, um, I will say to the reapers, or the husband man will say to the reapers, right? Okay, actually, it's a 4103. I think the root of that is actually the 54. You understand? But check it out for yourself. You understand? Um, so it says right here, it says, okay, here we go. Of persons who show themselves faithful in the transaction, the transaction of business. Ones who show themselves faithful in the transaction of business. The execution, the execution of commands. Wow. I, I, that's what I, I, I didn't bring up. But the execution of commands or the discharge of official duties. The discharge of official duties. So it's like what I remembered, I only remember the first part where it was like of persons who show themselves faithful in transaction of business. Okay, maybe that's what I, I and I is doing proper, but the fullness of it is also the execution of commands. You understand the execution of commands and the discharge of official duties. You understand this discharge as the balabate was the one who was like the CEO. You understand? Or the one who basically was, you know, say like, say, I and I is in the Muse. Muse means the head of the fraternal order of the Beta Israel, specifically the Levites, but of any um, fraternal order, whether of monks or whether of priests on a certain level. That one also in the Belui Kidan, the Old Covenant, or the early um, Christianity was known as a Muse. You know what I'm saying? That's why I asked Paul, were you that Moses? And people say, Moses, Moses, there was something that just happened recently in the New Testament. Well, how can you be that other Moses? Because Muse, it's because of the key of Muse. And we always said what Muse really means. So here it's saying that, that faith also is, has to do with um, persuading or persuasion. In the sense, when Rastafari speak about reason, make I and I reason. Reason is connected with faith. It's connected with trusting and persuasion, right? One being, um, you know, persuaded of, of, of the truth. You understand know the truth in this word that at first it seems hard to believe. It seems incredible. But then when we study it and we walk in it, we see how credible, how mikredo, mikredo. Mikredo means, in, in Latin, is translated as, I believe or I have faith. You understand? It's like the apostolic creed. Mikredo, you understand? Or amnalo, I admit, I trust. Right? So if one is trustworthy, they are faithful in transacting of business. They're, they're faithful in the execution of commands. You remember we were just talking about Matthew or chapter 28 with the Great Commission. You understand where he says go, right? He says teach. You understand? All the things I've commanded you, observe. You understand? So he's giving us certain specific um, commands that we must execute. You understand? These are like execution, uh, executable programs. You understand? These executable programs, right? Or it's also the discharge of official duties. So if I and I say in this society, in the Lange society, or in I and I Rast among I and I Rastafari people, or if one is even in federation or any organized group, you understand, or business even. So we talk about how come we don't have more business, how can there's more unity, how can we don't establish our own institution? Because the root and the ground of it is that faith. We we have faith, but the faith is weak in faith. We have to strengthen. You know, saying like when the disciples came to Yeshua and said, well, how come we couldn't cast out the demons? It's obvious that there's certain demonism amongst the brothers and sisters, you know, saying, or, or something has crept in that prevents that unity that we know is a whole fulfillment of the King of Kings' word and way. You know, saying, so how come it's not manifesting in I and I life, we have to check ourselves, we have to clear ourselves. But now that I got that, hallelujah be to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit for that. And, uh, and you know, um, forgive me, brothers and sisters. I ask forgiveness for that. You know, I apologize. Not the sorry, sorry kind of thing, because Christ, he took our sorrows. You know what I'm saying? The only sorrow we should have is a sorrow to repentance, to change our mind. 
That means if we're hard-headed in a certain way and then we're becoming convinced or persuaded that that is wrong and doesn't work, you understand? Of course, there's some, sorry, there's some sorrow there, but that sorrow is going towards repentance or receiving Yeshua more fully and not putting him to like a second crucifixion, not trying to crucify him afresh, you understand, by our actions like, you know, like those of, of, of early, you know, the early times that are in this Bible, the so-called, um, so-called Jews or the Pharisees, Sadducees, Sanhedrin. But he says right here, let's just go over this, complete this here. It says, let both grow. So let both the tears and the wheat, let both of them grow until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tears. So the first ones which, which gather together are the tears, you know, are the tears. This is why, I didn't say I was going to say this, but I, I'll share this. This is why, as I come to understanding of this, certain ones and ones, even if they may call themselves Rasta or this or that, when you recognize that ones know or are becoming familiar of what the truth is, but no matter what the truth of the King of Kings and his Christ, they still are doing what they want to do, even in Rastafari name, but we know and we're persuaded of it, you know what I'm saying, and we have the evidence of it that it's not his way, I and I don't really want to walk in them sort of ways, you know what I'm saying, I, because when I look at it in the meta, in, on the meta level, it's like it says, first, gather ye together first the tears, so the tears are gathered together first, right, and it says, then bind them in bundles, right, bind them in bundles, you know what I'm saying, to burn them, you know what I'm saying, fire bun, to burn them, but, he says, gather the wheat, right? He says, gather the wheat into my barn. You understand? Into my barn. So, so the Moan Bessas that in the Yehuda Machiber Mazini, or in the English, um, Lion of Jewish Society of His Imperial Majesty in the Americas, Caribbean, and throughout the world, is likened unto his barn. You know what I'm saying? Liking them to his barn because we're seeking to, we're walking his way. That's just the whole purpose of this parable here. You know what I'm saying? It's to, it's to help us to distinguish those who seek to do his will from those who don't seek to do his will. You know what I'm saying? So many, you know, you know many are called, few are chosen. Really, many are called, but, but, and they may have a call and a calling on a gift, but they don't come to that point of repentance, to recognizing Chan. That's true. John say this, but we let this creep in or that creep in, and we need to weave that out so we will be more faithful and true to Rastafari. Some of them say, nah, I not follow this tradition or that tradition, so forth and so on. If the tradition doesn't agree with the teaching of his majesty, that tradition is making void the word of Jah. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like the tears, in a sense. The inkardad. It's like the tears. It's fake. You know what I'm saying? It's not like the wheat. It pops up. It appears. But John says... In the um, fulfillment of time, right, in the fulfillment of time, he said that these are going to be gathered all together. This is the interesting. They're going to be gathered all together. And there's a, foot, there's a footer down here in the Schofield, uh, Schofield Reference Bible on page um, um, 1016 or 1016. It says, the gathering of tears into bundles for burning does not imply immediate judgment. So, so even though that might seem like, people might think like, oh, that's going to be immediate, bam. No, the word says as we study it, it does not imply immediate judgment. It says at the end of this age, when we get to verse 40 in this chapter 13, the tears are set apart. The tears are set apart for burning. You know what I'm saying? It's like ones and ones, you know, what well, I've known in Rastafari, and they still are on certain levels, and, it, and it's like they're refusing they may be nice in certain ways, but they're refusing the teaching of his majesty. You know what I'm saying? It's not like they don't know. They know, but still, knowing what they know, they continue to do what they do. So it says the tears are set apart for, for, for burning. You know what I mean? Like even some of these who are hating on this ministry of his majesty, they're being set apart for burning. You know what I'm saying? But first the wheat, first the wheat is gathered right into the barn, and then it gives John XIV or John 14 and 3, 1 Thessalonians IV or 1 Thessalonians 4, chapter 14 to 17. Now, this is just one. This is the second. This is just the second of the, um, the, the, the parables that Yeshua says is concerning Jesus Christos, Getachin. It says these are concerning the, um, 
the kingdom, the kingdom, right? Now, there's a, there's a whole lot of good footer, footnotes here in the Schofield Study Bible, and we can't do, do justice to all of them. You understand? And we hope that either you get a hard copy of this book, of, of the Schofield Reference Bible. You can go to our website and find the, 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 the right, the exact edition. You understand? Because they have a new King James Bible. And that, all, that, that still has some of the same stuff in there, but it's not really in the same order. So, like, if we had this in a formalized class setting, we would try to make sure that we have enough of these, you understand, as well as His Majesty's Bible, as certain basic texts, so that even whether we study together, you understand, in one place or we're studying at a distance, we all can be on the same page. You understand, so let all things be done decently and in order, in his order, because we are after the order of Melchizedek, according to this wisdom that we have and this revelation in the scripture, particularly in the book of Hebrews. Now, brothers and sisters, I said that I was about to make a, you know, make a little move and stuff like that. A little movement forward. You understand that may Jah, you know, may Yah protect I and I going out and I and I coming in from this time forward, even five or more. But make sure that you get these, amen, amen. Make sure you get these. You understand? Download these. You could download everything. But if you can get these, print them out. And some of the co laborers, the co laborers, the co ministers can also, um, you know, print these out, print out like a master copy. You understand? Whether take it to like a Kinko's or some other place and make copies of these, you know, and distribute them and also, you know, um, share them for ones and ones. These can be the basis of Bible studies, you know, saying, on the New Testament, the high school level, along with the sabbatical Torah readings, the Rastafari sabbatical scrolls, all right? So um, we touched on um, you reap what you sow, but we're going to go over, John Will, and go over these in a little bit more detail, but we just want to share you know, share a little bit of that, um, a little bit of that uh, parable of, of Yeshua, because he says the key thing that he says right here, and we're going to fulfill it, fulfill it on this word, hopefully fulfill on this word right here. The key thing that Christ says, uh, the Son says, the Bain Ha Elohim says in chapter, chapter uh, 13 right here, he says, um, but he asks him, you know, um, you know, um, why speakest thou to them in parables, and in mythologies, and in mystery, in a sense? Um, in verse 10, Matthew 13 and 10, and he, in verse 11, 11 again, he answered and said to them, because it is given, it is given to you to know the mysteries, the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, of the Mengishta Samayat, but to them it is not given. He goes on to say, verse 12, For whosoever hath to him or her shall be given, but, and he shall have more abundance. So whoever has, even if you have a little faith, you understand? He, he can give more abundance to that because you have. But whosoever hath not, whosoever does not have, the, the, not, not even that low faith, even a low faith, because some people are, 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 are disbelievers or unfaithful. You understand? Know some it says go bad as soon as they're born, speaking lies. You know, and you really can't change that. It says, for, but whosoever hath not from him or her shall be taken away even that he hath, even what they think they have, because if the wealth of the wicked is, is heaped up, for the just is heaped up for the righteous. So it behooves us to know what our true righteousness is in the King of Kings and his Christ. Because therefore, if so, and when it be so, we recognize that that is ours. You understand? No stress. You understand? No stress about that. You understand? That is I and I's. You understand? As, as, as a part of our divine heritage. Verse 13, he says, Therefore, this is the reason why, remember why the therefore is therefore, therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing, you know, they see, they see not, you know, so they seeing with the physical eyes, but they don't see it, what it means spiritually, and hearing they hear not, and they hear with the physical ear, you understand, but they really don't hear with the inner ear. Neither do they understand, neither do they overstand, neither do they comprehend what they're seeing and they're hearing. 
You understand? And it says, in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Esaias, the prophecy of Yeshayahu, of Isaiah, which saith, by hearing ye shall hear. By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not overstand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. So it's saying that they will hear, but they're not going to overstand. So, so remember, faith comes by what? Hearing. So what do you overstand? What do you comprehend? It, it has a lot to do with what you hear or what you're willing to hear. And seeing ye shall see, but not really perceive the real reality. You know what I'm saying? The real, like, word of John matrix coding of this or that. Verse 15, it says, for this people's heart, their heart, their consciousness, right, is wax gross. You know what I'm saying? It's wax gross. And their ears are dull of hearing. You remember in, Ma in, in, in Hebrews chapter, uh, chapter 5, he said, I have more things to say concerning Melchizedek, but seeing ye, seeing ye, seeing ye are dull of hearing. A dull of the Shema, the Shema, uh, dull of hearing. You understand? Um, they are their ears are dull of hearing. So the dull of hearing connects with this. It, we're still in the same iris right here, right? Same overstanding, being guided by the Memphis Caduce. It says, and their eyes they have closed. You understand? Their eyes they have closed. They're seeing the reality, but they they, they close their eyes to it. You understand? Well, they, they they see it, but they make themselves blind to the reality, lest, least, at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart. So the overstanding is with our heart, our consciousness. Remember, the word must distill in that sense. It must disseminate into the heart to really make it active. You understand? In the, in the, in the so-called three-dimensional or multi-dimensional reality. Then it says right here, and should be converted. But he's saying now, at least, he's saying that if they could, if they could, or if they would make, them, if they would make their wills obedient to good influences, you understand, and, and to manifest and practice and apply what they have heard and what they have learned and what they have become persuaded of, then when they see, they'll be able to see with their eyes. When they hear, they'll be able to hear with even the inner ear, and they would overstand with their heart, with their consciousness, won't be weak-hearted, but will be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, and they should be converted. That word converted kind of links with repentance, kind of leads to that what's called conversion. But we're going to get into this mistranslation and find out what the true Ethiopic, the royal Amharic, the Metaf Kedu says. But still the basic idea remains true. They should be converted from the astray way to the true way. In other words, truly be like a Hebrew crossover from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, the Barhanana Salam. And I should heal them. So then at that point, Christ says that he will be able to heal them. This is, this, this is the key even for healing, if you really understand this. It, it is a process. People say, well, one don't know the process. Well, are one's applying this up to the study. Does one have at least that measure of faith? You understand? Of faith that says, but blessed are your eyes, for they see. So now he gives a blessing to the Dek Amazamorit, as we give a blessing to the Dek Amazamorit. Bless are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say to you all, that many prophets and righteous have desired to see which you see, and have not seen, and to hear which ye hear, and have not heard. And then he goes into explaining then the parable of the sower, which we have addressed before. But these are foundational teachings. You understand? I call, I call them verbal hieroglyphs because it's using symbolic language like the hieroglyphs. You understand? On the higher Hebrew or the Hebrew level. But we have to still be able to understand what they mean and they reveal to us principles. You understand? Foundation, like cornerstones as they were, you know, in, in this life and the life to come. So, brothers and sisters, shalom. Shalom to all of those who can receive the shalom of the King of Kings and his Christ. Salam tonight, and I